Research Design Lab. Hello everyone. This video will be a demonstration on how to use this GSM SIM 900A model. This here is a SIM 900A model. If you are familiar with this model, then you may know this modem works with a set of AT commands. These AT commands basically are fed through UART protocols, in other words serial data. You can feed this AT commands through this DB9 female connector placed here, which follows RS232 standards. But certain controllers or processors might not follow this standard. Don't worry, you can still communicate through this modem, provided your controller or processor follows 5V TTL levels. This here is the TTL interface of the board. We have ground, RX, TX and V in headers. RX needs to be connected to the TX of your controller pin and TX gets connected to the RX of your controller. However, make sure you connect common ground as well. The V in pin here could be used to supply voltage to this board. Any DC voltage between 7 to 12 volts will do fine. However, this is optional if you connect an adapter of 12V and minimum 2 amp current rating to this DC socket provided here. Please note the current rating in the adapter which you use. If you use an adapter with lesser than 2 amp current rating, this GSM modem may not function properly. Reason being is, the GSM modem during communication mode draws a lot of current. This current varies with network strength. So to be in a safer zone, please use a high ampere adapter, preferably 2 amps. Next we have this power button along with these mail headers. The functionality of this headers is to enable a user on how to turn on the modem. If you place a jumper between power key and ground, then by default the GSM is turned on. If these headers are kept open, then there are two ways to turn on this modem either by hitting the power button, however make sure you press and hold for at least one second. Just like how you turn on your cell phone. Or you can turn this on by giving a pulse of 3 seconds from high to low to pin data on this GSM model. This feature is useful where power saving is required. That is the modem could be turned on only when it's required by adding a few lines of code. Next here there are 3 indicator LEDs on board. Status LED, the power LED and the network LED. The power indicator is on while the GSM is on. The status LED should also be on. If the status LED is toggling, then it means that your current is not enough for your GSM model. Make sure you use a good quality 12V 2A adapter. The network indicator will keep toggling every alternate second. If these indicators are working accordingly, then your GSM modem is in the working condition. Also you need to understand the fact that every time you power on your modem, the modem will take some time to register itself into the network, maybe around 10 to 15 seconds. So make sure you power on the modem well in advance before you enter your AT commands into the modem. Apart from these things, there are a few other things on this board which you may be interested in, like how you can listen or talk to a person using this modem. For this purpose, you need to make a few connections on board. These two pins here are your mic input. Next two pins are for your speakers. Please note the fact that this modem has only mono connection for audio, not stereo. There's one last but obvious fact. You need to place a fully functional SIM card on the SIM card slot provided on the bottom of the board. Thank you for watching. I hope this product presentation was helpful for you to know how to work on this board. If you have any more queries, do post a comment on the section below.